2021 was a remarkable year. We accomplished so much. Probably the most important is we began to discuss how we could rework the relationship between the Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center, the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, Children's Hospital, and UW Medicine to create the new Fred Hutch Cancer Center. The establishment of the Fred Hutch Cancer Center will allow us to bring our science closer to our patients. And when you really think about 2021, one of the things that we can look upon as being a really terrific accomplishment was how our virologists in vid, both here at the Hutch and at the University of Washington, made contributions to understanding the pandemic, the discovery of vaccines, the, the role that our co-VPN played in vaccine development brought Hutch science to patients. And in that same vein, I think about the opening of the Clinical Research Center for Viruses that opened under Rachel Bender Nasio's leadership. And in 2021, how that facility began to do trials in patients who had COVID. And I think in 2022 and 2023, you're going to see the broad impact across our entire society of work that started here. We've always done this. If you think about bone marrow transplant and cellular immunotherapies, treatments that have been pioneered at the Fred Hutch, that really was the best example of translating Hutch science to patients. And now with the establishment of the Fred Hutch Cancer Center, we have the opportunity to do the same thing for patients with solid tumors, to do it for patients who have lung cancer and colon cancer and Merkel cell tumors, and melanomas, and pancreatic cancer, and head and neck cancer, in addition to the strong areas that we've worked on in the past. When I think about 2021, I realize that we have set in motion the ingredients to create a truly unique place to accelerate cancer research. And that's what the Fred Hutch Cancer Center will be. The blueprint of our future includes doors that are open to people who were previously locked out. There are so many things that the Fred Hutch can look to and feel gratitude and pride in our ability to accomplish. One of the things I'm most excited about is we brought new scientists to the Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center, including eight who've come to the Hutch or identified through our unique cluster hire, which brought scientists from groups that traditionally haven't been represented in our faculty, all bring energy and enthusiasm and insight and innovation to the way they look at scientific problems. Remember, these recruitments were all accomplished in a time when traveling was difficult, when giving live seminars was extremely hard to do. Most of the job talks were given over Zoom. Another big example of progress was we saw the steam plant come into its own and, and fill with scientists. Many of the scientists in the steam plant are people who are working in other parts of the hutch, but we brought new people to the steam plant as well. And when I go to the steam plant, I am energized because I see computational biologists working right next to our experimental scientists. And that connection is really remarkable. Our science is the foundation of everything we do across the board, not just in cancer, not just in virology. When I think of the work of Akanchka Singhvi, her work on glial pruning that might give us insights into how the nervous system reforms and grows and evolves. It might give us insights into neurologic disease. And what Akanchka's work shows is how critical fundamental basic science is to the Fred Hutch and the contribution that the basic science division makes to our understanding of human biology and of human disease. I also think of the work of our graduate students, Ali Greeny from the Bloom Lab and Megan Garrett from the Overball Lab, for example, of two graduate students who made remarkable contributions to our understanding of COVID. And that connection between the graduate student, the postdoc, 
the PI, something which has defined the way science has been done at the Fred Hutch, is something, again, that is remarkable to see every year. A key pillar of the foundation of the Fred Hutch is our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because if you think about two of the three largest causes of death in the United States are cancer and COVID, both disproportionately affect Black Americans, Hispanic Americans, and uh, Native Americans in terms of outcomes. And if we're committed to eliminating suffering from cancer and viral diseases, we've got to understand why this differential exists. I also think it's important that we work to achieve greater diversity of our staff and our faculty. Over the next year, we've got to look at and think about how do we reflect the diversity of our community in the people who work at the Fred Hodge and our leadership teams. How do we work to develop or promote leaders that are as diverse as our workforce, who are as diverse as our community? I think finally, it's important to think that diversity, equity, and inclusion also talks about the way we work together and the way we live together and the values that we hold important to us. And I want to thank Paul Buckley's team and Chris Lee for the remarkable work they've done to make DEI front and center in the mission of the Fred Hutch. Philanthropic support is the mortar that fastens our cutting edge research to improving cancer patients' lives. Many of you know that grants from the National Cancer Institute and other parts of the NIH support about 70% of the science that we do. And that means 30% is supported by people who give to our mission. When I think about the opening this year of our Cryo-EM shared resource and the recruitment of Melody Campbell, again, that never would have happened without the generosity of people who see how critical our mission is. I can't tell you how challenging it is for me to walk around the campus and see empty hallways. I love to walk into the cafeteria and hear the buzz of people sitting, eating together, laughing, talking about their work. I can't wait to be able to bring more and more people to the Fred Hutch. They need to see what's happening in the Arnold Building. They need to see what's happening in the steam plant. They need to go to the new building and see how we have the chance to build the future together to make an enormous difference for people and for families. Mm -hmm.